How does a rideshare driver purchase a new car? It's not as easy as you think. In this video, I'm going to share with you five steps that I took to purchase a car. And stick around. At the end of the video, I'm going to share with you what exactly this car is that I purchased. So probably the single most important tool that we as rideshare drivers have is our car. And there's a time to lease a car and there's a time to purchase a car. And the time that you want to lease a car is when you are a full-time driver putting in a lot of miles. Because when you lease a car through Uber and Lyft, you're going to get unlimited miles, you're gonna get free uh, maintenance, minor services, and your insurance is included, and you can just uh, get in and get out whenever you want. Now, when you get to this point in my career where I'm not driving quite as much, um, I've decided I wanted to go and purchase a car. It's not as easy as you think. Um, I tried to get a $5,000 loan to get my Prius. That's what the, uh, the, the, like the trade-in value was. I had to pay at the end of my lease $5,000 to get the car. And I went to two different banks and they both turned me down, which is crazy. It was like a hundred dollar a month payment. And I have a 750 uh, FICO score, but I didn't know what they were looking at. And I'm gonna cover some of that in this video. So let's get started with step number one. Step number one is know what you want. So when I started out, I thought I'm just gonna get another Prius. But then I, uh, leased a, I rented a car through the Fair Car Rental Program and I had a Hyundai Elantra. And I kind of liked having a bigger car, a quieter car, a more peppy car. So then I started looking at uh, bigger cars. I looked at the Toyota Camry. Um, and then I realized I also want to get really good gas mileage. So what you see here is my list of things that I wanted. So I wanted great gas mileage, like 50 plus miles per gallon, if that's possible. Quiet interior, because I like to listen to podcasts and music. I wanted a moonroof. Uh, because I like to feel the sun and the wind on my face. I want Apple Play, which is a great feature. And the color I wanted was uh, really black, but I could do with a blue or, or a gray. So that was my list. Now I know what I'm looking for. Step number two is look for your car. And the first place I looked was online, and I looked at car gurus. And I really recommend car gurus to get familiar with cars and prices. They seem to have all the cars that could possibly be purchased um, on that website. You can do a lot of different search features. You're able to look at cars that are just within 50 miles of you. And uh, this was a great place to start looking. The second place I looked was a website called Carvana. Now Carvana is pretty cool set up and it uh, hasn't been around too long, uh, but they just didn't have as many cars to look at. So the selection wasn't where I needed it to be. And um, so I kind of skipped through that and I went to my next source. The next place I looked is called Shift. And Shift is really great. They had a lot, a lot of cars to choose from. And if you saw a car that you're interested in, they have these places you can go and you can test drive up to three cars. And uh, then you can work out the financing with them and move forward. So that gave me a lot more information and I got to look at some other cars and I was ready to go look at a, a car. But then I realized that um, I need to get financing. So let's talk about financing. Financing is uh, difficult for us as rideshare drivers because we can take some great tax write-offs, but being that we're self-employed, uh, many uh, banks or lending institutions are gonna wanna look at our tax returns. And because we take all those deductions, it means our revenue is pretty low. Now here's what they look, look, look for when they're evaluating you for a loan. They look at two things. One's called DTI, which is debt to income, and PTI, payment to income. And the goals that you want to achieve is for the DTI to be at 45% and the PTI to be at 10%. And as you can see in this, uh, this spreadsheet, the only way I get to the numbers that the, that the banks are looking for is if I show income of 60,000 or 80,000. That's uh, my sweet spot. Step number four is find somebody who will work with you. And that is somebody who wants to make the sale. So I found a car that I was very interested in and I went to the, and I contacted the dealership where the car was located and I went in and I found somebody who uh, wanted to make the sale. 
So he didn't ask for my tax returns. He just asked, how much money do I make? And I said, well, conservatively, I make $8,000 uh, a month um, just, just from driving for Uber and Lyft. He goes, hmm, do you have some other kind of income that you bring in? Do you have something else that you do? And I said, well, yeah, I write, I write articles and I make videos uh, for a blog and I'm starting a podcast. I've got a lot of things that I'm doing to generate revenue. So he had that information. And then he put together the package that was sent to finance. And within half an hour, he said, we're good. You know, you're going to get approved. Your rate's going to be a little higher because we got to account for the fact that you're self-employed. I said, that's great. And you, you can get a loan for me. That's awesome. So lesson to be learned is to find someone who will be an advocate for you who wants to make the sale. Just go into a bank. They don't care. They're just looking at dollars and cents. But if you find someone who wants to make a sale because it helps him to make a sale or her to make a sale, they're going to figure out creative ways to get you through the system. And that's exactly what happened here. Step number five is go get your car. And I went and got my car. And here's my car. I got a 2017 a Honda Accord Hybrid. It's a beautiful car. It's got a little scratch here and a little ding here. It's a used car. It's got 35,000 miles on it, but I got a good deal for it and I was able to purchase a car. So the other benefit of purchasing a car is that you're going to get this car loan put onto your credit report. And that's different than having a uh, credit card. So this was a big win for me. So it was a huge day. It was a big win. I got to drive away in my new car and uh, that's what I've been driving now for the last uh, couple of weeks and I've been loving it. It's quiet, it's roomy, it's black, that's my good color. And it's got a moon roof and it gets, I've been getting about 45 miles per gallon. So not as easy as you'd think. In summary, not as easy as you'd think for us to get a, a new car. Um, but uh, it, it, finally, it finally happened as I dove into it. And I hope all the little details I shared with you can help you if you're in a position where you wanna get a, a different car. Uh, for your rideshare career. Y'all go out and have a great day. This is Jay Crater with the Rideshare Guy. Thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, subscribe to this YouTube channel. We've got great content. If you're a rideshare driver, you want to stay on top of things that are happening in the industry. And we're always giving you lots of tips and techniques and ways for you to make more money in less time. Work smarter, not harder. Be safe out there.